The end of the year can be an excited moment for many. Gifts, food, family, and friends. However, that's not the case for everyone. 15.9% of households in the 10 provinces were food insecure in 2021. That number can only have grown as things have gotten even harder for families. In Winnipeg, Peg City Kindness Crew is helping out in whatever ways it can. I'm Jay Malowski. I'm one of the co-founders at Peg City Kindness Crew. Um, we're just in the middle of uh, our hamper season. Well, just finishing up our hamper season this year. Um, yeah, we've been around for since 2020, I would say mid-2020, in the middle of a pandemic when I realized that everybody was kind of going through it. Mm -hmm. And that was a great conversation we had last time, just talking about yeah. things. You now I dropped that little bit of the bomb. It's like, how would you solve all the problems? <laughs> this time I won't drop anything crazy like that on you. Hamper season, uh, how is that going? I know looking on social media, you were looking for drivers uh, the other day. So obviously there's a lot of hampers to deliver. Yeah, so there are 180 coming from our organization directly. And then we also had families uh, offer to sponsor some as well. So I think we were at about... I think we hit about 190 total. We're pretty much said and done. It was a bit of a frantic scramble in the end. It always is. Um, the last day or two, we're always like, oh, no, we don't have enough milk. Oh, no, we don't have enough eggs. Oh, my God, we need these things to make this happen for Christmas, for people, or for the holidays, for people, any of that. Um, but we got it done. We had some of our volunteers just not be, be able to make it that day. And so we stressed about deliveries and and. Some people came through the following day, and so we've been able to get them all out at this point. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you were able to get things all all figured out because you know it could be a it be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And just talking before about the number of hampers just that the Christmas cheer board has had to do. It's it's a rough season yeah. for people right now. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I know that like a um yeah the Christmas cheer board had thousands of requests. I um, mean, I can't like I can't even imagine trying to process that number of things. But we knew right from the beginning when they had 13,000 requests in the first two weeks uh, that our year was going to be a lot bigger than we had anticipated um, originally. We were like, OK, 150 is a good number to do. We can do that. We've, we've managed it every year. We can keep going with that. 200 is a goal. Eh, it doesn't sound really realistic, but then we, we saw the results of like them posting stuff and we were like, oh no, we're in trouble. Thank you for the diligent effort that you and the rest of the volunteers are doing to try and make a difference here in the Winnipeg community. It's just, it's incredibly sad to know that there are people struggling with food security out there. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, I... I wish I had more stuff in my savings, and I had some uh, emergency stuff that happened over the past month, but I am fortunate enough to have been able to get through that and still be comfortable, but not everyone is like that. So thank you for volunteering your time and putting out so much time and, and effort just to help people out. Yeah, yeah, we're we're happy to do like heart work is what we call it, um, and, and to, to help other people when we ourselves have been helped and that's why it's so close to our hearts. And so we're so passionate about it. It doesn't take start up a conversation with any of our directors, any of our volunteers, and we won't stop talking because we're so involved in it. We love it so very much. So getting to know people and connecting with people and connecting over food and that sort of thing is all very passionate to all of us. Mm -hmm. So what is the process like for uh, getting these hampers, connecting with people go? W what is kind of the steps for this? In the beginning, when we're first getting organized and first like, OK, it's getting ready for hamper season. It's time to sort it out. Um, what we'll do is we will make a questionnaire. And so that questionnaire, um, there's two ways it can go. You click on either you're sponsoring or you're uh, requiring a hamper. Cool. And then you just follow the steps there. That questionnaire gets spread through social media, word of mouth. It's pretty low barrier. We try to make it as low barrier as possible without like a, um, rules about like what kind of funding you have and like what kind of money you're making and that sort of thing. If you're struggling, you're struggling, whether you're making 100000 a year or 40000 a year struggles all across the board in Winnipeg as we speak. 
as we know. Um, and so you apply, we go through our list, we have a chart, we match up sponsors who want to sponsor, but then we take on the rest of it. Um, and we work with partners in groceries like No Frills or Fresh Co. Um, and we work with our partners over at Second Harvest as well um, that came through in a huge way this year for us. Um, 13,000 pounds, or no, 1,300 pounds of vegetables and 300 pounds of bread. Um, so like we're, we're doing the best that we can to not only rescue food, but also help provide more food security for people and to, to have a meal with their families during the holidays. It can be a struggle to kind of find that balance because there is so much food that is wasted. When you're looking at statistics, it's it's anywhere between yeah. like 60 to 80% of food that's processed ends up going to waste. So I know a lot of people say it's not that there's a lack of food out there. It's a lack of distribution. Uh, I agree entirely with that statement. Um, it's a lack of whether it's priced appropriately for people to be able to get through some of these hard times, right? Which they're not right now in, in grocery stores or restaurants and that sort of thing. Prices are going up like exponentially. So um, it, it's definitely making it a little bit harder. So when we have access to these like bins of fruit or vegetables and things like that, that we can include in our hampers or our emergency hampers or whatever we're working on in that moment, it's uh, definitely a game changer for us. We're doing Christmas shopping this year and then you see like, oh, this is the last minute kind of sales uh, of the evening and you're looking at the prices and it's like 40% off and you look at it. Oh, wait, it was, it's says it's 40% off, but it's like way more than the price it was even last year still. And this is supposed to be a sale. Yeah. It's, it's been hard for a lot of our hampers. We weren't able to get turkeys. Um, and we, we went with hams, which isn't ideal because there are families out there that don't necessarily eat pork. Right. And we keep it very non-denominational when it comes to our holiday hampers. So but we, we do our best and some got like chicken thighs and legs and things like that. Right. Like it was it was very much slim picking for terms of proteins and, and trying to get something to folks. So it's not what our traditional hampers look like, but it's it's really, truly the very best we could do. I, I think you know, sitting down uh, together with you, having these conversations, going out, having these hampers, and, you know, when, when people are volunteering, filling these hampers, it, it's a place where we can start building community and, and conversations, and I think that's where things start when we're looking at, like, um, the, the labor movement that happened in Winnipeg years ago. Maybe we're getting to a point where we need to start having these conversations again. I know our corporate or overlords don't necessarily want to want to hear that, but for individuals who are listening and just out there, you know, ha have these conversations. Is it fair to you that you should be struggling just to take care of your family or people that maybe their finances means they? aren't even trying to have a family because they're scared of what that could mean for uh, their income. Is it fair that people are struggling where corporations are making record profits? No, no, exactly. It's, it's conversations with the people around you and your community members and your family and your friends. It's funny because like my family always knows at Christmas or whenever we all get together, uh, that I'm coming with these conversations and I'm coming prepared to talk about the hard hitting stuff that's affecting our city and the people here and the people that they don't even know. And like every year when I'm doing this kind of stuff, I'm, I'm so blessed and I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful that my family, when I started all of this, they all got involved right from the get go, whether it was like dropping off donations or like taking in donations for me at like uh, all of their houses, my brother's house, my dad's house, all of them, like they were like, yeah, I guess you can drop off stuff here. Jay, I've got a pantry full of stuff for you. Can you please come get it? That kind of stuff. Like I'm, I'm so lucky. But they also know that when we get together to sit down and have our family meal, um, that I'll come with the hard questions about the people who are living on the streets, about the, the food security crisis and that sort of thing. Because we're all like, we're all lucky and we, we can make our way and, and we can make it work for us. And like, but there were times that I couldn't. So 
And then my family couldn't like, we've all seen struggle and we've all been there. And so that's why it's so important to all of us um, that we all get involved. It's building those networks, building that sort of familiarity with your mm -hmm. neighbors that we don't really have anymore. It just seems to in this 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 life that we're living right now where everything is readily available, we have technology and things beamed into our brains at all time. It is too easy to kind of fall into this mindset of just staying within your bubble and we yeah. we know that when communities kind of stay within those circles, you know, you stop thinking about people beyond that people people outside and you know what that's what i'm striving towards thinking about others out there that are struggling even if i wouldn't necessarily benefit from a, a social or public service does that mean mm -hmm. it has any less value no of course not because it is helping someone else we just got to move away from the mindset of like if something doesn't benefit me then i don't want it it's the same thing with down in the united states with the student forgiveness uh down to texas <laughs> two people didn't qualify for everything that they wanted so they sued and now they ruined it for everyone oh that's awful yeah sometimes the box just doesn't fit for you and and that's okay but that doesn't mean that nobody else should be able to have those things or benefit from those things definitely um, people need to like, just think about taking care of other people and taking care of the people around you. And like the way that in harm reduction, the way that a lot of us look at it is that like hurt people take care of hurt people. Um, sex workers take care of sex workers, people who consume, um, anything take care of other people who consume anything. Right. Um, it's, it's very like just take care of each other and we can get through this. So people just need to stop and take a minute and think about the world around them, the people around them. So let's say specifically, no, you don't consume narcotics or drugs or opioids or whatever, but I guarantee that you know somebody that does. You just don't realize it because you're not a safe person to stop and think about. That's really what it is, is that people need to stop, think, consider the people that they're hurting or that could use their help and then and stop and actually do the help and do the work well here in manitoba the constant struggle to get access to like safe injection sites right <laughs> like like when we're looking at statistics and the places that are available uh throughout canada it it only shows that it helps reduce harm it if it's just you know helping reduce uh bloodborne uh, diseases from people having access to like uh, uh, clean uh, needles that's a harm reduction and that's that's a positive but it's also when they're in those safe spaces where there are professionals around you know they can start having those conversations of hey when you're ready we can have those talks about getting clean what are the steps for you if we don't have those spaces, those interactions aren't going to happen. And if individuals are just looking at someone on the street who maybe is uh, an addict and they come from a very judgmental point, those people are never going to get help because there's going to be always a barrier then. Yeah, there's always that stigma. There's always that that negative outlook around the, like uh, the negative connotations around the words like addict and and to get clean and that sort of thing right like oh okay i myself am in recovery um and have been not using for like it's gonna be four five years honestly uh yeah five years congratulations thank you um in the summer but like yeah so but like a lot like you hear the word addict and you immediately feel like you're less and and that sort of stuff right so like it's 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 changing the way that people talk about these things to the people that they love that's where it really starts and so when you start having open conversations without any judgment and without any negative casting towards those people then that's when our world starts changing and then w when you're in those place when you're helping people you can then also start talking about the systems in place 
that led someone to get there, whether it was zero access to mental yeah. health services or they were low mm -hmm. income. And that can lead to like people seek out ways of escapism if you're in low income. You know, you're going to find ways to pay for uh, drugs, whether that's stealing or um, uh, sex work and things. And the systems that are in place right now do not protect uh, individuals that are deemed the lowest of yeah. society. But if we fix those up, people wouldn't feel like they would have to. And not to say there's anything wrong. I'm the kind of person that believes that all sort of narcotics and stuff should be decriminalized because why are we sending people with addictions to jail where it's not going to yep. solve anything or, or sex workers. I am strongly in the place that sex work yep. is work. And yeah, we just got to change society. Yeah, for the better, like we just, right. We need to take care of each other. That's really it is that everyone needs to take care of each other. Consider somebody else's point of view without hurting somebody. That's it. That's all. And that's where peg city kindness crew comes in helping yeah. out. Yeah. We, we try our best to not, like when when somebody comes to us with a scenario or says that they need help and then tells us their story, because quite often a lot of the people who need help come with their story and come prepared to tell a story. But we don't ask that of them. We don't expect that of them. That's not a fair expectation. I don't like if you want to share your story with me and you feel that I'm safe to do that. I, I am touched and honored that you feel safe to do that. But I'm never going to be like you need to justify why you say that you need food. That's not who we are. We try really, really hard to meet people where they're at without judgment, without any like casting, without anything like that. And I find that like all of our directors and all of our board um, and all of our volunteers are really good about it. And if they're not, then we take that time to teach them how to maybe change their perspective. How have things gone over this, uh, this past year and yeah. Um, kind of what are you looking towards or what are some of the the plans heading towards 2023 that's kind of like a mind <laughs> right <laughs> the whole the the past three years have kind of felt like just a repeat of the last it's like oh it's 2020 take two 2020 now take three <laughs> exactly yeah it feels like nothing's moved and nothing's changed and so like Truly, I can't believe that we've been doing this for almost three years. Um, I was, I think I was talking to somebody last week and they were like, well, you've been going since 2020, Jay, like since like May of 2020 or April of 2020. I was like, no, I wait, have I? Right. And so I was like, oh, okay. Yes, we have. That's right. My bad. And they were like, how did you forget? I'm like, because it feels like nothing has changed. Um, <laughs> but so this past year was, um, it was a tough year, right? Like as everybody struggled financially, so did we, of course. Um, we did manage to get incorporated for the first time. And that's so exciting for us um, because that opens us up to more funding opportunities, partnerships. We carry more of a reliability with us now as opposed to a bunch of people being like, hey, we just want to give out food and do good things. Um, now we have uh, like a brand about us, I would say. So that's and merch. You got merch now. Yeah, yeah. One of our volunteers made these for us. Um, and so we're pretty excited about like we're gonna have, I think, 20 to have like give away and sell. So all of our volunteers are gonna get one. Um, like uh, okay, I should say all of our reoccurring volunteers are going to get one because we have just people that pop in and out, um, which is great and super helpful, but we don't have enough hats to go around for that. <laughs> um, and so yeah, one of our volunteers made us uh, like me and Deanna, one of these each, and we were just thrilled. Um, but anyways, so it's been a tough year. Um, we've been pushing really hard to get more sponsors and that sort of thing. And it doesn't, it feels like it's not going the way that we would like. And we haven't quite blown up into the like the corporate world, which feels gross to say uh, the way that we've hoped because more corporate sponsors means more money, means more people we can help which is, is really, that's our end goal. Well, is, you got to utilize the system that is currently in place, right? Yeah, so we're we're starting to look at grants and we're starting to sit down with those. And we have uh, a, a newer board member who has a lot of experience with grants and, and that sort of thing in those systems. So they're going to be super helpful for us um, going forward. Um, and so that's been a bit of a challenge for us to switch over from like just begging our neighbors for food and money to 
start looking into bigger, broad scale things so we can make differences. Um, this year, we did start our Fresh Start program, which has been a bit of a change for us because it's different. It's when people get into their new house or their new uh, home, let's say, or their new home, uh, and we can help them get furniture and things that they need, whether that's like kitchen appliances or whatever. Um, well, it, I definitely we, know about moving into a new place for the first time and then you're yeah. like, there's so much that I need. <laughs> yeah. Like, and people have like, we've had people, we had a family come from the Ukraine that we were able to help and, and kind of change the game for, uh, we got them a bed and a couch and like uh, a toaster and like all sorts of stuff. We furnished, I think total four different families homes, like fully pretty much. So that was kind of a cool experience to go through and start to figure out. So we're going to probably develop that a little bit more and see how we can help, see if we can build some partnerships in to help us with that as opposed to begging for things again. Um, and then this year, I really want to push on um, more of a traditional harm reduction kind of an outlook, right? I want to help people start getting a look into how you can actually help people who are going through um, problematic substance use, um, through um, supporting people on the streets, what you can do to like a hand, like how you can get your hands on Narcan, how everyone, everyone should have Narcan on them all of the time and where you get those things, how you get those lessons. And I want to help, like help my volunteers know that and understand that as well. So, um, yeah, I really want to develop more of a harm reduction sort of a program, I would say. Uh, that's been kind of my goal since the beginning is to see that. Um, I want to see if we can get more partners to take care of emergency hampers and work with us on that. Um, because it's been kind of touch and go where we've had food when people have asked. We can help them when we have absolutely nothing in the bank and no food. Well, sorry, there's not much we can do. Here's a list of people that can help you. Right. And that that hurts in those moments oh, when you feel that you can't help someone. Yeah, it literally breaks my heart. It's the hardest thing to be like, oh, I'm sorry, I have nothing. Um, I, there's been points where I'm like, oh, I have a couple extra bucks. I'll send you some money or I'll send you some groceries directly, like whatever you need. You tell me and I'll do what I can. But when I have nothing, there's actually nothing I can do. And that kills me. Yeah. That's and then it's the struggle because you also have to look after yourself as a as a human being at the same time if you give too much of yourself and like then you burn out or you run out of resources to care for yourself and then you can't help at all that's exactly it and my friends and family often have to be like jay maybe you should check yourself you're running close to burnout right they'll, they'll stop me and they'll be like mm, maybe you need a second maybe you just need to turn off everything for a minute and i'm like no no it's fine and they're like no, no, it's not fine. We know your warning signs. Thanks. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Somebody checked me. All right. I'll sit down. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've had to come to terms with understanding when I've reached those kind of yeah. manic parts in your life where there's just so much going on and there's just a cycle where a bad thing happens. You don't process it properly. Mm -hmm. You react to it. And it makes something even worse. And it just goes and goes and goes to get to the point where they're like, what happened? I can't deal with it yeah. <laughs> anymore. That's yeah, that's exactly it. Like my friends and family, uh, I have such a really amazing support network for myself that like they know my triggers. They know my signs of burnout and they know what my spin out looks like because I'll hit this one corner and then it hits so fast and they're like, nope, let's grab her before she hits the bottom, please. Right. So I'm, I'm quite lucky and, and honestly, very, uh, I feel very like supported in the work that I do. Having these conversations is incredibly important and getting a exposure for Peg City Kindness Crew. But, you know, we need to go beyond just talking about things. What are some things, um, of people here in Winnipeg can do to help you out to help those that are struggling? Yeah, huge ways that you can help folks um, or help us to help folks are check out our volunteer page, sign up for that on our Facebook, 
Pike City Kindness Crew volunteers. Um, you can uh, uh, obviously donate money, time, uh, in-kind donations, items, food, um, that sort of thing, really any of it. Um, yeah, just volunteer, help out with that sort of stuff. If you want to take out some food uh, and hand it out on the streets one day, but you are like scared to do it alone and that sort of thing, you can always come with us. You can always make us um, and like a, become part of our team, our community, our friendships, our family really is what it comes down to. Um, people are always welcome to get involved with us. We'll, we'll always accept your help. Through that, you tell your friends and they tell their friends. Exactly. And the more we get involved, we can start making some actual positive changes because the way news is currently going on just worldwide, it's – Yeah. We need some positivity. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Exactly that. Yeah. It's it's exciting as we grow. Uh, uh, the the people that we meet and the, the friends that we make and the, the families that we gain is, is so natural and beautiful. Um, and we're really excited to do that into 2023. Uh, where can people go? Uh, you mentioned a volunteer pl- page, but where can people go to find out more about Peg City Kindness Crew? Yeah, our Facebook is Peg City Kindness Crew, Inc. Our Instagram is Peg City Kindness Crew. Um, you can email us at pegcitykindnesscrew at gmail.com. Honestly, if you Google us, you'll find us. Things are tough, and we can only get through it together. Get to know your neighbors and community. Build community gardens and gathering places. Create coalitions that promote health care, child care, workers' rights, housing, income equality, indigenous and human rights, harm reduction for all those struggling, and pressuring your local representative to fight for the best interest of the people. But that's just my opinion. Are you interested in discussing culture, community, and social justice? Contact communications at u-channel.ca. We'd love to have you on the show. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.